Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com uh, making the final video of the individual videos that like sit together of Kevin Gilbert albums uh, here on Friday, January 28th. Um, Call Me Kai, the second part, talking about the two, the four albums that he released and gave his gift to people at Christmas time um, from 80. I guess it was from 85 to 87, but I don't know the details. It's like, the fact there were four, maybe he gave these out. Like, in 87, he gave out more than one. Like, he gave out... So, talk about the, the, the last two. The Point Blank from 87, and then Mix Bag 84 to 87, as you can see. I can avoid the glare. There's your track list. It's hard to... Anyway, um... So, you know, I mean, I, I talked about the other two records, uh, Decent Exposure 85 and um, sometimes Y86. Here's a Point Blank 87. There's your disc and, um, oops, this looks like a calendar, TRS calendar. You know, I just revisited, yeah, it does have it, the uh, You Are Here podcast from last year that, you know, Wayne Perez did with... Um, talking about this release, Call Me Kai, uh, with Mark McCrite, and um, I was reminded of the C-Spot Run, and I did re revisit the Giraffe Special, too. C-Spot Run was, in effect, I guess, a band that... Um, he puts Kai on here, interesting. It's a band that Stan Cody and J. Scott Smith, at one point, the two members who would be in Giraffe, played with Kevin and... I don't know, some of the stuff was from C-Spot Run. I don't know if there was other music that they had that didn't make, that isn't on here. But, um, so here's Mixed Bag. I'll get into the track list photo. Let's see if I can avoid damaging this. This is the, you know, Mixed Bag. And uh, revisiting that podcast that they did, it, it sounds like um, this was initially just going to be a three-album set or three-disc set. Um, but the mixed bag sort of came together at, sort of toward the end. Here's a letter, that whole thing that Kevin wrote. It talks about how his professional musician, he'd write, make, he'd write and record an album every year and give it to people as gifts. The lyric sheet she requested, oh no, this is something, Dear Doug. I think this is where he talks about, is it good by 3.8? Yeah. Living in America, living in the USA, born in the USA, yes. See, now that, that was coming to mind, actually, listening to this. You know, I know Kevin Gilbert... Well, he spent a lot of his time the last at least 15, maybe 14, 15 years. He was in high school, I think. Yeah, in Northern California and parts of L.A., like going back between, between them. But he was born in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And, of course, he was born in 1966, November 1966, November 20th. You just do the math if he was still there when he actually was born and was a kid. Growing up in the late 60s, mid to late 60s, and then early 70s to mid 70s. I don't know when his family at some point ended up moving out to California, but assuming he w wasn't out there for a while, Bruce Springsteen, you know, um, did he actually, was he a fan? He knew about it? That's when Bruce Springsteen was coming up. I'm a Springsteen fan, especially the 70s stuff. Uh, debut album, I think, was 73. He did the two records, Greens from Masbury Park and. Um, uh, Wild the Innocent East Street stuff because Born to Run was 75, I believe. So, it was, anyway, it was, you know, the, the whole, and even like there's a song, Point Blank, this, the, the title, there's a Bruce Springsteen song from The River, I believe it is, called Point Blank. I don't know if Kevin was a fan of Springsteen or because he mentions the boss in that little write up. So, you know, locally from Kevin's, you know, <laughs> His origins, where he was actually from, you know, local guy makes good, local boy makes good, you know, Springsteen. But, so, just, that, that just kind of came to mind, not the musically necessarily, although there's obviously a lot of use of, like, piano and, um, but, um, this music, obviously, and I, Wayne mentioned, um, in the podcast that he, some, a lot of these songs were written, parts of them were, maybe even recorded initially, 
um, going back to 81 when he was 15, when he was 15, 81 and 82, or 82 really, uh, mostly 82. So I didn't realize that even though maybe they were completed initially, mixed bag, some of these songs were completed in 84. Uh, but he didn't start giving these out until 85, as I understand it. So, But just getting to the track list for Point Blank 87, the first of the two discs I'm going to include in this video. Um, my favorite probably being Goodbye L.A. That, that is a highlight on this whole collection. This whole uh, you know, collection or group of al albums he gave out. Um, it's super catchy, super poppy, super upbeat. Um, I'm not sure what I would compare it to exactly. Maybe like a Super Tramp thing or, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's pop, but it's not bad. It's like happy. It's, yeah, maybe influenced by the Beatles or the Beach Boys to an extent too, or Queen or ELO or something like that. But it's just, it's very catchy. It's, I would put it in league as I think maybe I mentioned in another video. I put it in league or in the same, similar category as the song, um, Finally Over You off of Nuts. It's just that well conceived. It also has a really good like horn section toward the end, which also Finally Over You has. He, he liked to arrange um, trumpet and trombone, I think. The thing is, the credits on this don't really have... The, let's see if they, they don't talk about Goodbye L.A. on here, unfortunately. Only a few songs have credits. And that's what they, they struggled with because it just weren't... You know, you assume most of the stuff was done by Kevin, but I don't know if he played the horn sections. Maybe he did. Maybe he played the trumpet and the trombone, or I don't know. The same with Finally Over You, for that matter, I would ask the question. But um, but the other biggest highlight on this, there's a version, another version of Staring Do Nothing, which I like, which I think doesn't vary dramatically from the Sometimes Why version, for, or the, the Decent Exposure version, rather. There's four versions, and I'll get into that stuff when I make that video that I'm basically complete with all the different versions like Kevin did, um, connections, but, but the other one I would put on this, this, my highlights is Donna Ray or Dana Ray. I don't know if Dana Ray, Dana Ray or Donna Ray. I, I heard it was pronounced Donna Ray. He says Donna Ray vocally. Is it Donna Ray, Dana Ray, D Dana Ray? But that's also very kind of catchy, poppy, melodic, earwormy, uh, to an extent. Um, so that, I mean, the other stuff on here I like, uh, Shannon Elizabeth, which is a song that, I think I looked at it again, and I think it's the same version, but I could be wrong, that was on Bolts, I believe. So I usually think of, the, between Nuts and Bolts, the, the ones that, um, that are more ballady are the ones... No, actually it's on Nuts. I always, I you know, I should, I should have these... These album track lists, yep, it's on nuts. So I mean, there's a either an early version or that version, maybe not mixed to the same degree. And then, um, yeah, I mean, suits me fine. I wrote down, and I'm gonna get into this into that other video at some point. I thought of maybe there's a connection between suitcase living because he did suit Fugi on Shame of the Truth, Shame and Truth, and then suitcase living, which uh, was a bonus track. Well, the first track on Decent Exposure, 85, I think is also a bonus track, and I heard extra download, as I came to be reminded, NRG, the album, was originally a vinyl. Then they issued it as a disc, but before they issued it as a disc, I think in the year 2000s, they had it as a free download on Kevin's site, which included the an additional six, whatever, five, six, seven tracks, including, I think, Suitcase Living was one of them. Um... But suits me fine, though. It's interesting they were discussing about that on the podcast last year. Um, there's part of that that there was reminded of... Mark McCrite was saying it's reminded of Shadow Self, like the bridge section, and, or one of the second verses of Shadow Self. Um, I will be coming or whatever. I'm not sure. Maybe the bridge. Um, but no big deal. It's a, sort of a funky piece that... After listening to it again now in the last couple of days, I'm liking more. I mean, it's growing on me, the, the second half of it specifically. Um, only one you need, more for, more for You is a ballad. One of, the, one of like a dozen maybe or like eight ballads he has like this. I mean, if, if I was given a, a test and I was having to distinguish and I didn't hear any of the vocals, 
some of the other ballads that he's done, including stuff off... Not on, not on Thud, but I'm talking on maybe even Giraffe um, and some of the other ones on here, on these four discs. I don't know if I can distinguish them that well. I wouldn't know them at this point. Oh, and I forgot that probably in one of the other highlights, well, there's two more highlights, but one of the other highlights on here. So there's a lot of good tracks on Point Blank 87, but One Bad Habit. One Bad Habit has a cool riff. It gets a little repetitive, but it's catchy. There's an acoustic section in the middle, too, but um, it does sound, the riff especially, makes it sound very, I wouldn't call it hair metal, but um, hard rock, 80s rock. I'm not sure the comparison, like George Thurgood or um, maybe not so much that, but like, it sounds like 80s style guitar riff, riffs, those, that riff that, that, I don't know if it's Stan Cody or who's playing, I don't think it's Kevin, who played that guitar riff on One Bad Habit, but, but it's a catchy track. I mean, I, when I listen to it and it's near, it's near my have in my head and, um, One Bad Habit of Always Loving You or whatever, I think that's what the lyrics basically sight or insight um but nightmares they they talked a bit a lot about that on the podcast nightmares was a song that he wrote that ended up on a soundtrack for the the, the 80s film night of the creeps and i was just looking at that and i found it the original or the the one that people know um i think kevin i don't know if he sold it to, to them or not but the band the motels and their singer martha davis did for the movie Night of the Creeps. I was looking up Martha, Night of the Creeps, the film, and it has Lively. I forget his. I forget his name. I forget the actor's name. Um, it's in my history. At least I could find it. Let's see here. The kid who played Rusty in the second vac vacation movie, Jason Lively. He's in that. Um, Dick Miller, who's been in a million movies, he makes an appearance. I guess it's a it's a zombie movie of sorts. I've never seen it. But the surprising thing when I looked at it is it looks like the trailer and the clip for that video, Night of Nightmares, the one that Martha Davis did or um, the Motels did, it does look like kind of like a sort of cliched, classic 80s cheesy horror movie, zombie movie with limited production. I mean, you know, it's, it is what it is and it, it has its sort of, it's a guilty pleasure or it has its merit for the time it was made. But you look at the rating and the... Jason Lively's known for that. Besides European Vacation, that's what he's most known for, almost. Um, but I'm surprised how... Like, it looks cheesy, but... I don't know, I may want to check it out at some point. I, I have a thing, I grew up in the 80s, so... And 80s horror movies were no exception to that. Um, but I would. it looks like a cheesy zombie movie. But... I'd probably sooner watch that than a lot of the stuff that's being made now, actually. It's as scary as it's as sad as or scary as that is. Anyway, so yeah, this is a pretty good collection. This was 87, and I came to learn, I was talking about Eddie Money. He was still with Eddie Money. He called me Kai, going by Kai Gilbert and Eddie Money's band. He was still in Eddie Money's band again, through, I guess, throughout a lot of 1987. He didn't leave Eddie Money with probably a steady paycheck, even though he had to compromise some of his time not being at home. He had to go on the road and stuff, but... He was with Eddie Money for maybe the better part of two years or a year and a half. Um, so, yeah, he was still, when he when he recorded or did a lot of this music, a lot of it, not all of it, he was still with Eddie Money. And I don't know if, like, Goodbye L.A., even Don, Don Ray was reflected some of that because, you know, say he didn't want to do top 40 music. That's why he didn't stick with Eddie Money. But, again, there was part of Kevin that had a, a very unique talent to writing poppy melodic hooks and he loved to use those horns and so but yeah goodbye la is among my favorite tracks in this whole collection so going on to mixed bag 8047 this is among the four probably the one i i don't know if i'll anticipate revisiting the least because it fits the title and i think like we said 84 to 87 some of this stuff go, goes back to 84 so some of this stuff was maybe written and recorded maybe at least during, if not even before NRG. Um, I guess, you know, among these, I mean, Finale's on here that's the same, almost the same version, it's the same version at the end of Bolts, and similar to, of course, the cr Finale credits that's instrumental at the end of, um, oh, I believe it's Power of Suggestion, yeah. So, um... You know, if the rest of this... Yo, Yo, Yo is one of the songs that I kind of think about this for, too, I guess. 
because and they were reciting this you know, again in that podcast last year with Mark McCray on, on it's on YouTube on you are here. That ha was related. You can hear the remnants of of what he did with the you know with uh, Tired Old Man, which you know I don't know if it was leftovers. It was part of Tired Old Man they didn't include. You know he was writing that and this the second part the first the second movement of the Tired Old Man Suite Terpsichorean. The, the the funny thing is there's also Terpsichorean on this this L mix bag Terpsichorean two. Which isn't the same as the Terpsichorean in the the puppet or the puppet suite. It was known as the puppet suite, I guess, but Tired Old Man Suite. But it's not it's not the same. It's it's not identical. Um, and I even looked up Terpsichorean, the definition. I've never heard that word until reading through this again, being reminded. It's re relating to dancing. The twist was a revolutionary Terpsichorean innovation. So it's relating to dancing. A dancer. And I know they talk about there's a sample about something making you dance. So it's also a, a noun for a dancer. So, in the the pup in the tired old man suite. So, it, I guess I understand the the term. It's one of those sort of obscure like an SAT word. Um, but the mixed bag eighty forty seven, you know the track list B men one Sherwood B B men two sometimes Y. Um, those I believe are all instrumentals. Uh, sometimes Y, you know it has like a very kind of. We can call it melancholy. Um, what's the term? Soft, gentle, kind of dreamy element to it. You know, it's it does sound like you know something from Mark McCray mentioned. It sounds like something from a, a soundtrack from a, like an animated, like a Japanese anime movie. I can see that. Yeah, I could definitely see that. And then Bruno referred to. Um, I'm like basically giving people the cliff notes on the podcast. I referred to First Blood, and you know. I haven't seen First Blood in a long time, the Sloan movie, of course, the, of the Rambo series. But now thinking about it, I kind of remember that, like in the cr end credits part. Sort of you have something, you have a bunch of like fighting, war, gun, shooting, you know, tragedy, that kind of stuff. And then it ends, and you, wh what do you have? You have this like this sad part with piano. Um, so that, I can, I can understand that. Again, I didn't go, I haven't gone onto YouTube to revisit that to do a comparison. Um, you know, there's a few other tracks on here. Never Gonna Change, This Rain, If You Were Here. A lot of them, you know, kind of ballad kind of slower pieces, um, and Just Can't Stand. And then the last track, Sail Away. Um, you know, some time I may go back to these. Some of the songs on Nuts and Bolts I've kind of grown to appreciate over, over years rather than weeks or months. But Sail Away, I just wanted to know, and... <laughs> That might be my favorite among all the, that four or five tracks on the second half besides Yo 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 um, and Finale. Um, Sail Away has his brother, Greg, I believe. I, I didn't know who that was. Sail Away has his brother, Greg, singing. Um, I don't think. Yeah, it is. Chris. Not Greg. Chris. I'm not sure how many siblings Kevin had. That, that information. I don't want to pry or be, you know, intrusive. You know, these stalker fans that, you know, know about the family probably really appreciates and likes their privacy. But um, I think he has a brother named Greg and Chris. So this is Chris Gilbert. So I don't know. I don't know. And, like, I wonder if Kevin was the youngest, you know. But because um, his brother Greg has chimed in on Facebook a few times in the, some of the groups. So um, it's interesting some of the credits, though. J. Scott Smith. Kevin does play the horns on Finale, so maybe he did play the horns on on some of the stuff like Finally Over You and, um, well, even you think about Suit Fugi and, uh, and Goodbye L.A. But, but yeah, there's your credits and stuff like that. So, you know, um, this is, that, that's, that's pretty much it. This is a lot. It's four, as, I, as I've repeated more than one I've mentioned, it's 47 tracks, despite the fact that many of them were songs that he redid in multiple occasions um but in that sense it's sort of the gift that keeps on giving i mean the fact that it was remastered and remixed has given it new life new appreciation and a reason to go back to it some of these songs but i guess just as a cliff like sort of a summary if i did like a favorite tracks list and if i do the the, the video on favorite tracks from kevin maybe I, i'll this stuff will be repeated, but I would go, let's see here, The Rain Suite, 
those two tracks from Decent Exposure, um, probably Living in the USA, and of course the Tired Old Man Suite on Sometimes Why. Um, I would go with Goodbye L.A. and D Donna Ray on Point Blank. I would probably go with Yo 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 on Mixed Bag. And, you know, that would be the, the gist of it. I would probably choose a few of these other songs, of course, that I know. God's Been Tapping My Phone. Um, and... You know, it's hard to really pick, I mean, the Image Maker, the cover of Image Maker, one of those days, one of those days would be one, too. I remember I was talking about that on Sometimes Why. So, um, that would be the, my hi, my biggest highlights. I mean, part of it is, you know, knowing, like, Circling Winds, of course, I know from the Nuts and Bolts. And, um, in a lot of ways, this is like sort of an expansion on Nuts and Bolts, actually. I, there wasn't one was mentioned, and I know that the versions of Nuts and Bolts, a lot of those were later versions, but if you had, like, a Nuts and Bolts box set... You know, it could be like a combination. This this channels a lot of what you got with Nuts and Bolts, but it's larger and larger in quantity. Not necessarily larger in quality, but there's just more of it. It's kind of like almost Nuts and Bolts expanded. I mean, that's, again, the early years expanded. The 80s Nuts and Bolts expanded of Kevin Gilbert. I don't know. But anyway, that's it. So now that I've done, in effect, all nine, I'm going to do... I probably will do it right now, actually. I'm going to make another video... Just going through it, as, uh, you know, speed round as fast as I can, lightning round. Uh, not going to elaborate too much on the rankings and stuff like that. So, But anyway, um, what's your take on Call Me Kai again? I'd just be curious, and thank, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.